in any type of criminal activity, usually you can identify pretty much up front what the motive is. It's pretty simple. Uh, the problem with this is you cannot identify the motive. You can't identify the reasons behind the activity that's going on out there. Ah, tis yourself. My name is Mike, and in this video we're looking at... Well, it's actually quite a sad and disturbing case. The harassment of Bill and Dorothy Wacker. Bill and Dorothy were a kindly old couple that were subject to a number of home invasions, burglaries, and even assaults. To this day, no one knows why they were targeted, who was behind it, or what the whole thing was even about. Weird, I know. We'll get into it. Let's look at the unsolved case of Bill and Dorothy Wacker. Bill and Dorothy Wacker lived in a small town in Massillon, Ohio, in the same house they had lived in for most of their over 40 year marriage. Bill was born in 1920 and had served in World War II. Dorothy was born in 1927. It began in 1984 when the couple were subject to two separate home invasions when their house was ransacked. They didn't notify the police department until January 16, 1985 when their residence was targeted for a third time. Despite an investigation, the police found no clues as to the perpetrator's identity. Seems weird that you wouldn't tell police after the first two times, but okay. After the third home invasion, which is crazy, things were pretty quiet until summertime. In July of 1985, Dorothy was resting from heart surgery at her home when someone knocked on her door. The man, who she was not familiar with, claimed his car had broken down along the road and needed to use a phone. Dorothy let him inside. He made a call, thanked her, and then left. But not really. When she turned around, he crept up behind her and smacked her over the head, knocking her unconscious. When she awoke, she was on the kitchen floor, bound and gagged. The man had left. So she dragged herself to a window and got the attention of her neighbours, who called the police. Dorothy was not seriously injured. However, a message was left on the dining room wall in crayon. Cheaper, but will do. An antique watch, a radio scanner, a revolver, and a few other items were missing, according to Bill. Dorothy described the man as white, in his mid-twenties, blonde and blue-eyed, at around five foot nine. He has never been identified. Here is a sketch of the man who attacked her. Law enforcement visited a number of pawn shops and street dealers in the hope of locating the stolen items, but found nada. About four months after the assault and robbery, Bill found his revolver on his front porch, wrapped in a plastic bag. Over time, the other stolen items were returned as well, which was nice. Each item had been wiped, according to investigators, who hoped fingerprints would lead to the harasser's identity. Steal something, normally they're going to, if they don't have any use for it, they're going to sell it to somebody else. And it just looked like this stuff was laid around till it was brought back. The perpetrator then began calling the house, sometimes threatening them with violence, and sometimes simply breathing deeply. Changing their phone number several times failed to make the calls stop. Mm, I can hear your gears grinding about who could have been behind this. We'll get into that in a bit. The harassment then began to escalate. Occasionally after dark, they would hear a series of banging on the side of their house, though they never saw or heard anything unusual when they'd check outside. Eventually, they put up a security light, but later found a note on their front porch saying, Your lights are a laugh.
Obviously written by a cool kid with a Z instead of the S. More notes began appearing on the front porch, threatening and mocking them. Police noted that the uneven, jagged style of the writing appeared to be due to someone using their non-dominant hand to write, as if to conceal their handwriting style. No fingerprints have ever been found on the notes. The harassment, scary calls, threatening notes, it continued for a long time. Eight years, in fact. Then things took a turn for the worse. On the night of October 27th, 1993, an attack on Dorothy in her home while her husband was out caused her skull lacerations and a concussion. While she was in hospital recovering, police searched the Wacker's neighborhood and questioned several neighbors, but no one had any useful information. Initially, the police suspected Bill was behind the entire thing. However, both Bill and Dorothy denied having any responsibility for their own harassment. In November 1993, the Wackers staked out their own home, splitting into three groups and keeping in touch with two-way radios. Bill hid in a trailer in the driveway. Two of their son-in-laws watched from a van across the street, and Dorothy and her daughter Kathy stayed in the house. After four hours of waiting, they decided to call it off around 10.30 p.m. However, they then heard thumping sounds on the porch, where they found a note saying, Get the message. The intruder had been taunting them the entire time. Get the message, I presume, means it doesn't matter what you do, we're still gonna get you. However, this was the last reported activity from whoever was harassing the elderly couple. Well, as far as all this harassment is going on, which to me it looks like it's trying to force us to move. Why should I move? Why should we move? Why should we be forced out by a kook? To me, that's what it is, is a kook. Uh, I'll not do it. I'll stay there, protect our own. Bill Wacker passed away on July 9th, 1999, at the age of 79. On July 22nd, 2010, Dorothy Wacker passed away at the age of 83. And so the story just kind of ends. There was no more reported activity after the Get the Message note, and to this day it still remains an unsolved mystery. I mean, it's unsolved, but we can still hazard some theories. One theory is that either Bill or Dorothy, or both, owed money to someone. It would explain the message on their dining room wall, which otherwise has no explicit meaning. But if they did owe money to somebody, they never, they never said anything about it to anyone. Or could the entire thing be a hoax planned by one or both of them? They denied this before, but that doesn't matter. He says, I'm going to ask you a question, but uh, he says, I don't want you to take it the wrong way. He says, do you think your husband could have done this? And I said, no way. I said, he wouldn't do something like that. He says, we got to explore all possibilities. She says, no. Which, <laughs> why should I do something like that after being married 48 years, you know? The police suspected Bill, but could it have been Dorothy? I mean, possibly, but she did go to hospital after being attacked twice, so if she was behind it, that's a next level dedication right there. But so many things in this story seems to suggest that either one or both of them were behind it, or someone they knew, someone close to them. They changed their phone numbers, yet they still kept getting calls. Was it one of their children? But what was the point? Attention? Did they do it for attention? Not reporting it until the third home invasion, the return of items that were stolen, and the fact that even after changing numbers they still received calls, it does suggest, like, an inside job, but, but who knows? And after that last note, get the message, it completely stopped. It's very, very strange. Both Dorothy and Bill are dead, so we will likely never know if they knew more about the harassment than they let on. If it was an enemy from 
years before. That's, again, a next level dedication that went on for eight years. Strange case. Similar to The Watcher in New Jersey. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you as always real soon. My gift.